So my fagi stay dimi Enza yungi ndonge peshini Esa mi style feshini So my fagi stay dimi Okay, you know what I mean? We out here, uh, season three, you know, in the building. Um, uh, yeah, Joe Book City in the building, you know what it is. Uh, yo, can you please introduce yourself to the peoples? Hi, my name is Petronella Nonsigele Lochuma. Yo, and how did you get introduced to performing arts? Um, I mean, I've shared this story many times, but the first time I was introduced to performing was in a church in downtown Johannesburg, um, an Anglican church. It was a Christmas play. And yeah, um, and we were all holding candles and all of that kind of stuff. So I think for me, that would be my first introduction. Introduction. And how was it growing up in Yeovil? <laughs> well, Yeovil, I don't know. I mean, it was still bad back then, but like it was different to what it is now. So growing up in Yeovil um, was home. You know, I was a child that loved to play, so I was always playing either in Hillbro, Beria. I was just just a child that was very outdoors. And growing up with obviously my uncle basemental platform. Yeah, so te, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So growing up in that, so I had a whole lot of hip hop in Lini, you know, because that's where they would come in Lini, a basemental platform. So I had that. Um and just like uh, growing up in a big family and things. Mm-hmm. So Yovo was cool. And then uh, well, how was your experience uh, in, 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 in England uh-huh. uh, and also to the, to the school that you went to of the performing arts? How did that shape your, your, your thinking and that, that space briefly? So I think like obviously um, I was introduced to performing when I was seven years old in 1997. And then, obviously, performing still in church or eskolueni. And then, I think the biggest blessing was actually moving overseas. Um, I mean, it had its, like, cons and all of that. But, like, the greatest thing I think it did for me as an actor was that drama is taken very seriously, that side. Mm. So, being able to go eskolueni and major in drama and come out of this shell, because, obviously, I'm this South African you know, kid, I have a weird accent, I look weird, because I was told I looked weird, and all of those things. And then actually, being in England, it has shaped me, has shaped the actor that I am today. Mm. Yeah. And how, which which is the, do you think, the the screen or theatre, and which one do you think is more, what with what you'd think is the best for you, or like, which one is is it? Like, which one takes the cake, I guess, what I'm asking? I think all of it. So being blessed to have the uh, uh, foundation and starting point in theater and then transforming that into TV and film. But I actually, I know this is this sounds whatever, but you, you said for me, I think we cannot be actors and not go back to theater. Theater is mm. where acting was born so i funny enough i feel old for saying this but like i haven't done theater in the last 15 years since i left school at 18 so it's been something that that i've been wanting to get back into and this is definitely the year Mm. um and then in terms of the the industry do you think in terms of how actors are are paid and how the whole system works do you think it's fair for actors because sometimes an actor can do a role and get a certain amount of money and then for the whole year they might not have a job and then they they moving on to mouth hand to mouth if that i think that's the term what is called do you think, what, what is your perspective on that? And do you think what could change to make it different? I mean, 
<laughs> First and foremost, why are we acting like we don't know each other? Why are you making it seem as if like I'm just another guest? No, no, no. You, you, you understand the life. I'm on off the hook. And that's ah. the reason I'm asking you these questions because I understand it. You and understand because yeah. you've lived through it. it I'm, look, it's not really acting because I mean, I, I mean, I'm in the show off the hook and I'm going to be treating you professionally like sure. another guest and you always have to be professional so Definitely. Yeah. but like i'm saying you have witnessed it yourself I need to of course Uguti. i understand that's why yeah. i asked the question so Uguti, uh we're obviously not paid that well mm-hmm. we definitely you find you work and then you have to try and survive for the next four months or so or however long even six months um, and there's no UIF, there's no... Yeah, there, there isn't those things in place to protect us. Um, and so, you know, it'd be, it'd be lovely to work, you know, in Hollywood because that's why you find actors have enough time, one, to prep for characters, to prep and have enough time to get into those roles. And then you find, would say they don't, maybe they can do two shows in a year or sometimes even one. Mm. But here it's like... See a panda all the time. Yeah, and then who, who, which, who's your favorite actor? Or just give me three or two. Give me two. Uh, my favorite actor would be locally and internationally. Sorry. My favorite actor internationally would be Christian Bale. Um, uh, he's he's fire. <laughs> mm, I yeah. love Christian Bale, and locally I will say myself. Hey, see a Is that arrogant? I know you have to be confident in life, you know, and that's what it is. It's not. You have to see yourself like, I mean, it's not really sh- saying that you do not see oh, other I, stuff. I, I like, definitely love a lot of actors here. Of course. But I'm like, how about I give myself some love? Give yourself your flowers while you're around. Because yeah, if you don't give yourself flowers, who going to give you your flowers? Exactly. So, and then, and the movie, what, what is a movie that you, which has changed your, which actually made you want to get into acting, which changed your perspective? Like, yo, Okay, if you're putting it like that, I mean, I have a lot of movies that I like. No, in this case, it's but like if the gun was in your head, uh, what movie you gotta watch? <laughs> okay, give me three, and then I'll give you three. Uh, okay. Uh, so Green Mile would be my uh, favorite yeah, film no, that, that I watched dope, as a dope. very young child. Um, Inglorious Bastards. Um, third would be. Which one would it be? Which one would it be? So many. I mean, I heard you guys talk about Fight Club earlier on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fight Club know, is Fight lit. Club. I still watch it till today. Actually, I can't even watch it tomorrow and I won't yeah. feel bored. Actually, one that I just watched that I thought was a mind fuck. Okay. Are we allowed to swear? Yeah. <laughs> can curse all you like. <laughs> curse. Deet, deet, deet. Yeah. Is everything everywhere all at once? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was fucking crazy. That was a great movie. And then, um, just a quick one. Uh, I know you worked with Jamie on Rhythm City. How was sure. that experience? Because he's like a legend yeah. in, in what he does. Um, working with Jamie was amazing. You know, playing my dad. Yo, what a what a powerhouse energy. And rest in peace. Yes, definitely. Jamie. Um, Jamie was a big man, big bold personality and all of that, but very gentle when it mm. came to me. And his nickname for me was Petal. Mm. You know, um, we had a good relationship, father-daughter relationship, actually. Yeah, it was beautiful. That's beautiful. So what can people expect yes. from Chuma, Petronella, and Ticalello <laughs> in the future? I do have a film coming out this year. It's called Clean Job. I'm waiting for the premiere, so I don't know, but like sometime soon. Um, get ready to catch me on stage for the very first time in 15 years. Theater. And I think I'm just in a different space right now. Like um, with the point I made earlier on saying I believe in myself. I'm choosing myself as a favorite actor. You gotta so, do that. Exactly. So I'm aligning and I'm aligning, manifesting praying for certain and specific kind of characters to play. Um, I believe in myself. Mm. I believe I'm the shit. She. And so therefore, I'm not trying to do anything that is not aligned with where I am. Danko. And for the last question. I, I think you forgot to tell the people when you introduced <laughs> me. I gave my names on cinema. Guys. Wait, 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 wait. The last question I want to ask is, uh, 
what message do you have for Sipo and Amaku right now? And what do you <laughs> want to see them? Where do you want to see them in the future? Mm. And what do you want them to take away from this interview? Because this is something they will actually watch and be like, oh, that's my mom, that's my pops. Mm. So what is the, no. the message you want to give them? In fact, that this podcast will live for, this episode will be on there forever. I love that. <laughs> um, oh, that's deep. So, I think about death a lot, by the way. So, it's quite deep. So, one of the things I'd like to leave the kids with is that one, I love you guys so much. Truly, truly, I love you guys too much. And, um, you know how I am, how I'm attached to the boys, right? So I think the one thing I would love to say is whether I'm here in the physical or not, I will always be there. Um, no matter what, and I have your back. I'll support whatever dreams. Both the boys are very different. Very different, but very strong individuals. And the reason why we named Utamaku um, Kumkani, his second name was because I'm raising two black kings. And so I think for me, it's just trying my best to raise these young men. Um, I'm trying, trying my best, you know. I lose my mind and all of that. But um, let's just say, Uguti, just know that I'm always here. Yes. <laughs> Love y'all. Peace. Lord, it is peace. It's off the hook. Woo! We done. Peace. Shout out. So my father is dying. Enza yonki ndonge peshini Esa mishtai li feshini Zomba fuck is daily Ok